Hello, everybody. We are now live with Echoes Linger, and we are so grateful you are all here today. Uh, so this is going to be our uh, Numenera streamed campaign. Uh, we've had one episode of it so far, but if this is your first time jumping in, don't worry. Uh, we're all going to get caught up. So uh, please let us know hello in chat. We've got a couple cool uh, things for you tonight that we're excited to share. So I will be your GM, Darcy Ross, um, your community relations coordinator. And I've already been a lazy GM by uh, offloading a lot of my GM prep for this session to uh, some Twitch uh, audience members uh, over the weekend. So I'm really excited to take some of the ideas that uh, all you beautiful audience members may have brought to me and see how the players ruin our beautiful plans. Uh, that is the best part of jamming, in my opinion. Uh, so why don't we, yeah, let's see. So that, that video is still on demand if you want to watch it after the show. And uh, yeah, so why don't we introduce these characters and then um, I'll tell you a little bit of something special we're doing tonight and then we will jump into the action. So uh, how about Alara? Want to introduce yourself for us? Sure. I'm Alara, and I'm a graceful jack who rides the lightning. Excellent. And uh, how about Chem? I'm Chem. I am a mechanical nano who commands mental powers. Loverly. Uh, and Grandpa Iron, t tell us about yourself. Uh, real name Bruce, but <laughs> tonight I'll be playing Grandpa Iron, and I'm a uh, strong glaive, even though I'm a grandpa, because... I fuse flesh with steel. I'm sort of a billion year in the future cyborg. Excellent. And how about Kalis? I'm Kalis. Uh, I'm a charming Jack who explores dark places. Beautiful. So uh, uh, the the real in-person uh, names are also listed under everybody's little chat window. So I'm really super thrilled to be running Numenera for uh, Shauna, Monty, Sean, and Bruce. So Bruce is should be ex extra interesting tonight because he has come to us from, uh, and for previous uh, streaming engagement, uh, Acquisitions Intoxicated. Uh, do you want to tell us anything about that? How are you feeling, Bruce? Uh, well, I was happy to discover that not only were we discussing craft brewing, we were drinking craft brews from a previous <laughs> episode. Uh, went really well, though, and as several hours ago, I'm sure there are no repercussions for this evening's. <laughs> and it might be a little in character anyway with Grandpa That's Iron. Right. <laughs> a little addled. Perfect. Uh, so... Um, let us see. There is a special. So we just became Twitch affiliates today. So you you all helped us become, uh, you know, have enough videos and start being able to produce content that um, there are other ways we can engage with Twitch's features and we can have a little better streaming quality. So thank you, everybody who's come and watched our stuff before. Uh, thank you to everybody who's followed and who's, uh, you know, watched, uh, told people about this. It really, really helps us. And um there's a, there's a special new feature that I want to have as a way for you to interact with the, the game tonight. Um, don't feel obligated, but it's an option. So uh, you can become a subscriber of our channel, uh, which is a way to uh, like support the, sh the channel and support what we do. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you have a free subscribe to a channel every month. And so if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, it's, it's free for you and it uh, helps support the show. So you it's up at the top of the video. There's a little subscribe button. And anybody who subscribes, that's going to trigger um, me to go searching through my weird deck or my asset deck. And so it will either make things weirder and possibly more complicated for the players or give them new tactics. So, uh, ooh, and uh, Xander with Oz just uh, subscribed. Super cool. So um, let's see. I let's smell chaos tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good chaos. We'll see how it goes. Um, so I will, I will bank a weird thing to describe here shortly. So I'm very excited. I like chaos. That's that's how I like to jam. So let us uh, let us start. So um, at the end of the last session, we would have uh, given out XP, and so I think we're gonna we're gonna start with that this time to remind us since the first episode was a while back. So the the players had been cast out of the city of Echoes because a sh in an echo of the past implicated them in a a murder, a murder of a beloved actor in their own theater company, the Eclipse Theater. And so they were cast out on this, uh, this mission to, to redeem themselves by walking the path of Kalaval, the leader of the, uh, the originator of the Order of Truth and the Aeon Priests. And so the idea was they have these fancy little bracelets just to sort of track you, question mark, do something to you. And uh, if you go 
uh, seek out miracles of, of Kalaval and bring back truths of them, they'll let you go and you can go back about your lives because you'll have learned so much about yourselves and morality, you know, that sort of thing. So <laughs> you have all um, found yourselves, had wended and wound your way through the paths from the city of Shalamas to Bodrov, but that, that adventure was not without its challenges. So Alara had uh, its challenges and discoveries, right? So Alara had been had found out that as you were walking along this path, uh, there were these huge hexagons that underneath the drit and the 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 organic and inorganic uh, little bits of of uh, debris that had worn down over the years, and underneath these. The, the road were these panels and you were able to open one up and you there was some strange liquid inside and perhaps a whole region of subterranean something. And so I, I would say that that is worth a discovery. So I'm going to award you an XP for uh, figuring out how to open those and close them. You know, who knows what you might find down there later on. Um, you also found uh, you actually threw a, a number of you know, turning GM intrusions to your advantage, uh, which I thought was very impressive. You and and through other discoveries, you found out a lot about those bracelets, a lot more than you started knowing about. So uh, you found out uh, Grandpa Iron was uh, trying to, you know, t- Grandpa Irons was starting to malfunction, and he sort of had it was so used to tinkering with his own body that he was able to uh, uh, correctly tinker with this bracelet and find out more about it. So the things you've learned are that it it has some kind of tracking your placement and your motion. Um, and it also has uh, it, uh, it it has some uh, effect on you where even if you cut off your hand, it's somehow linked through some kind of ritual to your to your very body. Uh, so you'll have to do something more clever than just chopping off your hand, uh, sadly. And the third thing, which was that Alara found out after her started kind of tinkering with her brain and getting a little electrical feedback from the creature, uh, for, it, it, like the the bracelet actually felt kind of living to Alara, um, but she sees a lot of electro- electrical beings as, as life, so that might be your own uh, perception. But you found out that it was either leaking emotions onto you or deliberately manipulating your emotion and trying to make you feel fear. So there's something really weird going on with these bracelets, uh, making you even more excited to uh, to not have to uh, deal with this anymore one way or another. Uh, and we have another subscriber, which is very cool. So uh, M. Dimalanta, thank you so much. So we've got two uh, weirder assets coming up. Thank you so much. Uh, so let us give you, I'm going to give uh, everybody 2XP for their various contributions to figuring out what's going on with these bracelets. Um, and I'm going to give you uh, all additionally 1XP uh, for finding a Numenera artifact, not just a cipher, but an artifact as Kalis had stolen uh, a cool uh, bracelet from uh, the the well-meaning Nano from a caravan who was just trying to help you out and you just kind of pickpocketed her in, in the guise of a hug. So I'm, I'm unfortunately rewarding that behavior, I guess, and that's on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just found it. What do you mean? <laughs> how mysterious. All right. <clears throat> so um, one XB for all of you for all of that. And so you have arrived at the city of Bodrov. It's on a, a big uh, plateau that seems quite unnatural. It's a very, very well-defended city. And it's actually mostly built into the strange structure that um, that you sort of have to wind your way up to. And so there's there's a little bit of activity in some, some buildings up top, but there are many entrances down into the main part of the city. And so I'm going to draw from the weird deck here real quick to find out something weird that you're encountering as you, as you get up there. Uh, so the path that you are walking on um, – is uh, so, so as you there were these beautiful colored uh, pieces of cloth and tapestries that you kind of walked through as you were properly entered into that top part of the city. And um, off to the side, far to the left, you hear the sounds of what seemed like maybe battle or or um, other kinds of really really active maybe training grounds. You hear some grunts and things like that. Uh, so you could tell there's some kind of training ground over there. Uh, but the the main path uh, that you seem to have walked on is uh, an object. It is made of solid water. So that is our first weird deck of the night. And I think that adds beautiful things. So as soon as you sort of walk through this tapestry, you... Uh, you have that moment where you feel like you're missing, you're stepping on a, a step that isn't there as you feel like you should be going through this river that you're walking on now. Uh, so how, how, do the, how do the four of you react to this? How are you doing? Uh, well, go ahead. Uh, I, I, I step back. I, I, don't, I don't trust that. And, and so even if that means that I have to pass back through the, the 
barrier. <laughs> uh, I think if you really hold on to the edge of this archway that brought you in, you can kind of t- toe, you know, get your sque- you know, reach your leg really far, and you can just make it off to the solid ground, off the path. But it, it's pretty wide, so you look very silly doing it, and people look at you very, uh, very odd. Okay. Well, I know a lot about the Numenera, so clearly this is a Numenera thing, and I'm just going to step on through. Plus, all of my mechanical force and such, they're all insulated and sealed against water. So even if I did fall in, it's a nice, refreshing little splash. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, uh, how wide is it? The, uh, it's quite river? wide. It's maybe four, at least four people across. Four, like four people tall, four um, people wide. <laughs> four people <laughs> wide. It's sort of flat, okay. and it's flush with the the edge of the water is flush with the rest of this uh, uh, synth like structure. The the floor of the rest of the structure. Okay. Uh, well, I'm sh- I'm trained in in balance and careful movement as well as physical performing arts. So I'm just gonna ju- do my best to jump over this <laughs> without even thinking about it. That's just my instinct. Uh, I think since you're since you're tra- have the training, you're able to uh, to scamper away. And Grandpa Iron, do you does it even uh, register with you? He's just walking forward, going what? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, and and there's lots of uh, joy going on in, in this uh, in in um it, as in the sort of like main uh, opening that you've kind of walked into. There's a there's sort of a main square that seems to be built around this path, and so there's some uh, there are some like little shops, but you and um and there's some people who are wearing really elaborate like headgear that seems very impractical. It might be some kind of you get the sense that there's some event happening today or or uh the, uh, there's some kind of energy happening here. Um you're also getting the sense of, you know, you see a number of people who look like soldiers walking by and they they still look very stern and serious. So there's a bit of a contrast you're getting in the people here. Um so that first weird deck thing was from uh, Xander, uh, the Xander username. I'll call them out as I sort of check them out so you know which one was yours. Um, but uh, as through at, at the edge of this square, there's some, there's some shops, there's some stalls, there's some people congregating uh, near, a, near a statue. And then uh, at the edge of the square is a big cavern uh, that's been carved out of the, the ground and seems to lead to some very rough hewn steps leading down, down into the city. And so uh, you can kind of go left to where there's a bunch of like uh, the sounds of maybe fighting or there's going down to the city or talking to all these people here. So you have a contact who you know to check out from that that lovely woman you swind- swindled. Uh, so there's the member of the uh, sort of nano cartographers guild who lives here, but who would likely live down somewhere down in the city proper. So what's your plan? Where are you going? I say we head down into the city. Look for this person. Uh, excellent. Agreed. Uh, so as you're doing so, let us start this off with a, an early good night. Um, I'm going to offer a GM intrusion to um, Grandpa Iron. Uh, so you had you you'd like traveled around a bit, right? You've you've been out and about. Um, someone recognizes you, uh, and so you can you can of course refuse it with all that sweet sweet XP that I've given you, or you can receive it and take one and give one to a friend. Grandpa Iron is always happy to see old friends. <laughs> Perfect. Although the fact that it's a GM intrusion, I guess, should give me pause. <laughs> um, I will I will hold on to this extra XP for a second before I decide who to give it to. Perfect. Um, this is a uh, so the weird, per- weird weird thing about this person is that they are f- they're eating something that is normally inedible. So this is going to be from Spangle Maker. Uh, so you see your your old pal, uh, maybe, and you can tell me how you know them. But they're a a really big, uh, tall man in very uh, colorful this like festival gear, right? Um, he's got uh, close cropped black hair, and he's got kind of scars on his face, and he is he's eating something normally inedible. So I'm imagining it's just like a what looks like a bunch of wires and circuitry and some glowing bits, like, you know, a panel like hauled off of some bit of uh, some Numenera device and he is munching on a huge chunk of it. Well, uh, I walk up to him and I'm like, Madeira, remember when we used to serve together? Oh my God, it's been 10 years. What the hell are you eating? (laughs) Oh, you got to try it, Grandpa Iron. You got to try it. Uh, And and he grabs you by the shoulders. He's shaking you. He's like, who are your friends? Come, come. It's the day of the, it's the day of the big match. Grandpa Iron. Now, now you were thinking of, tell me you were going to enter. Tell me. You're a team, aren't you? 
Uh, tell us more. Tell us more about this match, I say, and I take a bite of whatever it is he's eating. Oh, great. Um, I think that it is not... Uh, necessarily tasty, but you have enough machinery to your body that you're probably sufficient, sufficiently able to like grind down these huge bits of metal, uh, metal and fiber optics and glowing sparks that shoot out, but it doesn't hurt you. It's just uh, not all that pleasant, but you take a, a nice big manly bite out of it. <laughs> Why? Uh, he says it's, it's uh, Gazrava. So Gazrava is the most recent, uh, craze taking the whole steadfast by storm it is a a sport that originated in key and um let's see chem you would know about this actually because uh gazrava and i'm going to set a little command because this was a super good idea from a a redditor that i read who had come up with this whole sport and so i want to use it here um so they this used to be a training exercise for aeon priests and so it's sort of a like you know dealing with the Numenera requires finely honed uh, mental skills and physical skills. And so it was this training exercise that got uh, co-opted and, and changed and uh, people in key play it very seriously. And so it involves Gazrava Gaz spe spheres that you move around with your mind or each other and you sort of shoot them through hoops and you move each other around. And it's this very dynamic, bizarre, highly dangerous sport that it's turned into. Um so uh, this guy really wants you to go compete. He says, I would put 40 shins down on Grandpa Iron any day of the week. So I I turn to Alara and I kind of whisper to her and I say, wait, his old friends call him Grandpa Iron too? Like how long has he always been known as Grandpa Iron even when he was young? <laughs> Do you think he was ever young? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I've never seen his grandkids either. I don't know. <laughs> I, I came out of the clone vats this way. <laughs> <laughs> He's got good hearing for an old guy. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying this sort of as a oh, as a as a side whisper to Alara. <laughs> for mentioning how weird this is. Perfect. Um, are any of the four of you particularly like on edge being in this new city with lots of people around? And, you know, are you are you all more comfortable being in a city? I'm uh, grumpy, but I'm not on edge. OK, go ahead. I'd Kels. rather be in a city than not. But the fact that I'm I don't know the city at all still has me, I guess, a little on edge. Yeah, I'm thinking, Kalis, because you are haven't you know, Shalomas was your home. It's where you lived up. It's where you grew up. You ha you're not very experienced with these other strange places, although a city is still better than nothing. So I'm going to give you the asset specialize in groups. Um, if you, as you're looking around at all these people, uh, you know, these masses of people uh, who are, you know, some soldiers who look very spooky and some, uh, you know, regular citizens who are uh, doing strange things for this festival or or maybe it's for the, the, the sport, you're not sure. Um, in a round where it appears you might be attacked more than once, the difficulty of all your defense roles are decreased by one step. So uh, that is an asset you got from uh, M. De Melanta. So um, I'll, I'll keep, uh, I'll, I'm sort of front loading them as you, as I've GM intruded you and then we'll keep doling them out. All right. Okay. So cool. Grandpa Iron, what are you going to do? Well, 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 Grandpa Iron takes in this information, but he uh, turns to his friends who are kind of standing there looking like not kind of nonplussed and like they don't want to be part of this. I think, and he says, "Let's go find our contact, and then we'll maybe come back and do this uh, this competition." <laughs> Sounds very interesting. Oh, excellent! Um, your your buddy uh, stops munching on his huge chunk of of circuitry and, and wires uh, as a bit of fluid of some sort of like you know lubricant fluid starts dripping, and he says, uh, "Suit yourself, but you know I'll I'll be over at the stadium, and you you come you come to me when you're ready to fight. I I understand. You look like you've had a hard day. Um, a number of you have have mutations." Right. So the, you had had an encounter with something that wasn't the iron wind, but was awfully weird and close, some plasma that spit out at you as you were uh, crawling through a narrow crevice, uh, a narrow pass on the cliff. And so I believe, uh, uh, Ch Chem, your eyes are purple where they were not before. Uh, Kalis, I believe your your lips have turned black. Mm -hmm. And Alara, one of your hands uh has I'm not sure if you're hiding it or how do you feel about your 
unnaturally long fingers on one hand. I feel like there's a place where they're going to give me a real advantage, but I'm still pretty grumpy at the Aeon priests for, for even making this happen to me. Mm -hmm. So until I get to use them for something positive, I'm just, I'm going to use them to gouge out the eyes of those jerks that sent us out of the city that I love. (laughs) All right. That's my plan. Nice. Well, you're going to have some opportunities as you, as the four of you descend to go see your contact, right? So you start taking these, uh, this big, um, hewn staircase down down into the city and uh and so it, it's and it's lit by these um sort of shelf fung- fungi that are growing on bits of the edge and, and the ceiling um and so you're and you and there's all these little pock pockets of uh where the synth has sort of been eroded away or where, where something has been clearly removed from it like it was a socket for some piece of tech that's been long since removed and so lots of little plant life is sort of uh, inhabited that space now. And so as you get down to this, what you know to be the, the first, uh, the first level of, of the city of Bodrov, um, it, it opens up before you and it's, it's really just huge. You're sort of on these, you're still not off the staircase yet. And you get this big sweeping look over this, um, enormous cavern with very sharp right angles. So it must've been, you know, this, this, Part of the cavern was not actually carved out. It was just the stairs to get down into it. And you get a perfectly smooth ceiling that has uh, some strange uh, hanging globes that give give off light uh, hanging from it. And you have these little roads with little neighborhoods. And there's a um, a almost like ziggurat-like multi-tiered uh, palace, is for lack of a better word, um, sort of at the far end of this really, really big cavern. Uh, and you know that to be, because you are all citizens of Navarine, this is the the palace that Queen Armorlu uh, had built for her by a suitor and has never actually been in. But it is this incredible, impressive structure uh, that, that stands out ahead of you. So where are you headed? Who are you going to ask around for directions? You want to find that contact, right? Uh, yes. Who takes lead? How are you going to find it? What is, kind of information do we actually have in regard to this contact? Yeah, just a name. Uh, you have the name and uh, the the little book that uh, your friend Jal, who you had swindled, uh, had given you, which was the guide to the steadfast, told you how to get here, and said that the main uh, level of the city has a has a cartographer's a you know uh, and a nano nano cartographer's guild in it, um, but it didn't tell you where to go specifically. So your contact is Tybalt, T-I-B-U-L-T, um, and she's she's a person who might have knowledge about your wrists um, and will certainly be knowledgeable about the city. Um, so Alara, you've been here before uh, because you know of the other theater that, that exists here, and so you know vaguely where it should be. So there's a district, there's like lots of little residential neighborhoods that you can kind of see. There's um, a sort of, and then there's a district that's kind of where a lot of learning happens. It's where a lot of Aeon priests live and work and uh, have a little enclave. Uh, and it's sort of where some government buildings happen. So you you suspect it's off that way. So okay. if I'm you happy to, to take the, sorry, I'm happy to take the lead for guiding us through the city as much as I know. Mm-hmm. Then you get the XP that I've been saving. Oh, for lovely. My... Nice. Beautiful. All right. Um, so you... Uh, you notice that there's a lot of there's a there's a decent flow of people coming from the current level um, and going up uh, at, uh, behind you to sort of go to see the sport. It seems like it's sort of a big big deal. Um, but there is one person who you're passing as you as you wind and wind your way through these different neighborhoods. Uh, you at at some point you reach a square that's sort of right at the edge of that uh, Aeon Priest district, uh, and there is a a person who is in kind of ragged clothing doesn't look like they really take good care of themselves uh they uh they seem like a uh, kind of like a young woman but just really bedraggled uh and she is standing on a, a little um a pedestal that seems to be uh it's ringed with flowers but it seems to be some just strangely shaped uh old bit of uh construction that was part of this uh it seems like contiguous with the floor of this place so it's just a little little weird outcropping that's uh it seems it seems to have a lot of flowers uh put at it and she is standing on it and she is saying uh Kalaval is punishing us uh you know where were you last night where were you if none of us can answer that question uh this is clearly a curse and we must atone or we will never be saved and she turns to the, the four of you and says you uh uh 
act now, be saved, or call, uh, uh, receive Kalival's grace. Uh, but mm. she's not going to come at you. She's just yelling at you. Uh, <laughs> I just say, what the crail are you talking about? <laughs> she gets taken aback at your foul language. Uh, <laughs> and she says, um, uh, cer- cer- certainly wherever you come from, outsider, she looks you up and down, um, you, uh, you experienced the strange storm we had last night. It, it, yes. The lights in the sky. Uh, it was a dark omen. Uh, and... And I, I, I fear for our entire city. I fear for everyone here. Do you it's remember what happened Numenera. last night? It's not an omen. It's just the Numenera. Just the Numenera. <laughs> the Numenera manifestations of, of the other world, of, of uh, the, the true reality. <laughs> She's sort of going on increasingly strange uh, sentiments that occasionally... Uh, touch base with sort of what the Anne priesthood teaches and then occasionally are way, way off. Uh, (laughs) But she seems very upset. Uh, Does she say what she thinks it means? Uh, Does she, uh, she, are are you going to like engage with her and and come up and I will say what, what, what is, what does this mean? If it's a sign, what does it, what does it signify? Uh, We have, we have lost the way somehow. Um, I, I couldn't say, but that that strange that strange storm uh, left everyone in the city with missing hours. Um, I'm I'm not. It's clear you're outsiders. Perhaps you perhaps you were not punished in the way the city was. Grandfire says, "Better than missing eyes." <laughs> uh, she nods sagely. <laughs> I asked Shem if he has uh, just kind of quietly, not not to her, to the woman. Uh, if, if he has, did you lose hours last night? Do you know what she's talking about? No, I think she's just, perhaps she's lost her mind, but we weren't in the city last night, right? We just got here. So perhaps well, but we clearly had, we clearly had the effects of some weird storm or something, whatever that was. Right. But losing hours, I don't know. It could happen. Stranger things have happened. Maybe we should get Grandpa Iron to ask his machine-eating friend. When we go do back, we, uh, Grandpa Iron will do that. Do we get a sense of what she's actually like asking people to do specifically? Like, is she is she talking about that, or is she just sort of ranting about repenting? Yeah, as as you're watching her. Um, she doesn't seem to have very specific calls to action, but she's clearly very scared. She really believes what she's saying. She's oh, saying okay. that, you know, something horrible happened last night and nobody's doing anything about it and everybody is having, like, acting like it was normal and something horrible has happened. Like, she, I think she's mostly just calling for, you know, sounding the alarm in any way she can and she has no idea what to do with it. Uh, and people seem to be mostly just uh, giving her wide berth as they walk past. I'll, I'll say to her, you know, I think the Cartographers Guild might have the answers that we're looking for. Can you point us in the direction to where to find them? Uh, find them person? <laughs> uh, she says the uh, their their kind is kept over in that quarter, uh, and she says I'm. It's best that I don't go there, but you'll find them on two streets down. Please. Bring my message to them. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> no, this way? Mm-hmm. Two streets right. down. I'm going to like act like I'm going to confidently stride in that direction and see if everyone else is, you know, following. I'm following Jim. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, f- I feel tempted to leave her with the sort of words of reassurance, but I don't really have any. So I'm going to just sort of be like, it's... I'm sure. I, I'm sure we'll figure it out. They're there, but not in, in any way that's very functional or useful. <laughs> I hope for it has all done. we know, sorry. For all we know, yesterday she was yelling that a neen were going to fall from the sky. <laughs> True. <laughs> As we walk away, Grandpa Iron will tell the rest of you, going, "Oh, it has nothing to do with our bracelets." <sighs> Why would it have anything to do with our bracelets? Aeon priest Numenera. Magic. <laughs> QED. <laughs> uh, as soon as the four of you are past her immediate 
look out, uh, sort of square. She she goes back to just yelling, asking people to, to listen and to repent or uh, that we have been cursed, et cetera, et cetera. So you get into this nicer district uh, that, you know, it just it it has lots of um, bits of Numenera that have been used to uh, lighten and brighten the path. You walk through, uh, a, there's a little, you turn a corner and there's kind of a little cafe associated with some sort of big building. And uh, there seems to be little like uh, floating lights that are moving around, sort of illuminating it and uh, making the atmosphere very lovely. So this place has used lots of pieces of Numenera to make it uh, homey and beautiful. Uh, so the as you as you walk toward the the two streets to the left, you can see that to your right, you, you're actually uh, along a thoroughfare that would take you after a while, there's sort of a, a big, broad path up to the big palace. So you're not like at the palace's footsteps, but there's you you have clear line of sight on it. So that's sort of in that direction. Um, and yeah, you have this little cafe and you have uh, there's a, a smaller building um, that seems to have a big stylized map on it. And so it's got a little a little sign that has uh, sort of some rolled up uh, pieces, of, you know, like scroll cases functionally and uh, sort of a, a stylized map of the steadfast on it. So you suspect that's that's your that's your place. As we walk up to that, I turn to the rest of the group. I said, now, I've been running some calculations in my head, and I'm 97.3% positive that our bracelets have nothing to do with whatever this person was experiencing last night. So rest assured, we're fine. Are you? you can trust my math, because I'm the smartest person you've ever met. So is there a door to this cartographer's office or is it an open yeah, doorway? It's hanging down. Uh, it's hanging over the, the doorway uh, that the sign is hanging over the doorway. And I'm, uh, as you sort of approach this uh, green painted uh, door, that's got sort of a, um, a lot of pretty little squiggles and arches in it, in its, in its outline, um, a, a disembodied mechanical hand uh, shoots up from, from somewhere around the building and, and uh, gives you this, you know, sort of stop, universal stop symbol, uh, this mechanical, very, very finely articulated, shiny uh, metal hand uh, cut off at the wrist is uh, holding itself in front of you and in front of the door. Uh, that is from uh, Ixtenabre. Does it? Um, uh, it just sorry. covers there. I want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you just touch it? Uh, it, does it seem like it's like, it's, it, does it seem like it is not, uh, dangerous? Like at a first glance, it doesn't, it there's doesn't... no sparks flying off of it. It's not sharp. Yeah. All right. I touch it. Cool. So, um, it. I want as, to see what it is. Yeah. So are you, why don't you give me a role if you're trying to touch it to ascertain its function? Okay. So, uh, I am, uh, specialized in Numenera and, nice. um, that's probably, Probably everything. I roll a sixteen. Wow, great! Uh, so you you delicately touch a finger, and it sort of s scuttles a bit, uh, and uh, and seems to react in a in in as much as a hand can elicit and in, in affect surprise. Uh, Whoa! But it sort of lets you as you as it is not being uh, as you sort of touch it more. It sort of like calms down and lets you examine it. Uh, and what you find cool. out about it is it. Um, it it seems to be some kind of guardian device. It floats. It seems kind of as you as you move it around, you can tell that it it's kind of bound to the space. Uh, but it's um, and and, uh, and as you're watching it, as you touch sort of the, where the palm is, you're able to move. You sort of flip up a little um, fine, tiny, transparent covering, and it's it has some kind of uh, like. Uh, little uh orb that keeps moving around and seems to be probably reporting something about what it's uh visualizing functionally so it's some kind cool. of you know it's the peephole of a of a of this building i will i will interact with it just in case it can hear me and say we would like to gain entry uh it goes i'll probably name drop our our contact too Perfect, Jal. Jal sent you. Um, uh, at that, there's there's sort of a pause and, and a wait, and it, then it uh, it moves it moves back toward the building and uh, opens the door for you. Cool. 
um, inside. It's it's what you can see inside is it there are, um, a, a number of like wooden pieces in here where most of what you've seen around is pretty synth. There's some sort of organic different kinds of uh, materials being used, but it's kind of a little like a lounge with some tables and some furniture and uh, like some bookshelves in the back. Um, there's a, there's uh, two people sort of hanging out doing uh, sort of looking at books or, or f- fussing with some uh, device um, and they all look up at you and they both look up at you in surprise when you walk in. Uh, you need the the cartographer's surf- services? Hello, come in. In we go. Mm-hmm. Um, one, one in particular with a, uh, let's draw a weird deck. What, what's weird about her? Um, she has, uh, natural, um, armor rather than normal flesh. So she's got, uh, she looks like a just normal, uh, maybe, uh, 40 something woman, but she has, uh, sort of organic kind of like rhino skin studs sort of covering her entire body. And she's got a big robe on, uh, what can I help you with today? <laughs> um, so I'm not really ready to be the speaker for the group, but <laughs> since no one else is saying anything, uh, I will, I will say, I'll hold up my wristband and I will say, um, we were led to believe that if there was anyone who would know anything about this, it might be you. Or Tybalt, whoever that is. <laughs> oh, you want Tybalt. I see. Um, she... She asks, may I? And she wants to kind of touch your your wrist. Um, she touches it and she she turns it around and she says, uh, oh, this is one of those from uh, from Shalamas, huh? Wow. I've never seen one in, in person, but I have heard. Um, she says, well, you came in at an odd time. Uh, I'm afraid Tybalt is, is out um, on sort of a fact-finding mission. Uh, there was a bit of a strange occurrence last night. I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, but some storm caused some odd effects in the city. Um, perhaps you caught it if you were traveling recently. If you were coming from Shalomaswe, you certainly saw it. We did. It turned my lips black. Yeah, you should count yourself lucky. We're not sure what it did to us. We all are, seem to be missing uh, perhaps a few hours uh, of our of our memories that night. Uh, so I ask her. Uh, I ask her what what were you in the same position or did you wake up someplace else? How do you how do you know you lost hours? Uh, well, I actually have a fine chronometer uh, over here. I, I, there's a she points to a bit of. Um, kind of metallic liquid looking drip like device that's hanging on a wall and so she says I've been uh, conducting uh, I've been trying to grow some plants from another country in in Navarine soil and so I've been very carefully monitoring the times that I, I use at apply certain reagents um, I, and she sort of looks at some glazed over eyes and says uh, I keep track of the time and I noticed it was different when I when I looked back up uh, many others, uh, at least some others, have found themselves in other locations. But this is precisely what Tybalt is looking at into. So she's not in the city at all, or she's just not here. She's in any one of a number of uh, the neighborhoods here. I can uh, I can have her set up a meeting with you tomorrow. She'll be back sometime tonight, but I'm not sure when. Um, would Would that be agreeable? There's There's the sport going on today, of course. Lots of uh, citizens are interested in that. Yeah, an appointment would be fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, she takes out a little uh, logbook-looking thing, and she uh, pulls um, out of uh, elaborately hair, elaborately like bunned and braided hair. She pulls out some sort of writing device and scribbles down. <clears throat> uh, there's the city bells that ring every you know uh, every two hours or so. Uh, we're a little bit different from Shalamas time. I apologize, um, but if you uh, come at the fourth bell. Um, we will be in, in the morning. We will, of course, uh, be ready and waiting for you. In the meantime, uh, is there anything else I can help you with? Do you need a map? We're good at maps. We need lodging. Lodging. Mm. Well, there is the... Uh, we have some some light lodging for visiting scholars. That's fairly cheap, but not the most comfortable. Um, or I can give you a, a more 
comfortable uh, hotel somewhere down in the in the main area of the city. You know, the closer you get to the uh, the palace, of course, the more expensive. Well, we're not ignorant peasants, so I think we want to actually have some real beds to sleep in. <laughs> um, the other uh, cartographer person who is uh, who's been writing, uh, sort of sketching in his journal in a like sketchbook, looks up at you and in uh, anger but goes back to sketching uh, and she says uh, of course of course uh, and she uh, sort of is willing to show you the way since it's just down down the the way now the scholar is lodging uh, you'll meet all, all manner of other people it can be very fun uh, but I, I see that you want the the real bed option and I respect that uh, and so she's going to walk you to the edge of this this quarter and she says uh, down that big thoroughfare that's leading up toward the palace she says, um, do you see that large uh, pole with all the lights coming off of it and what seems to be, um, you know, a couple of, uh, well, they're snakes, but uh, they're very friendly snakes and they won't bite, I promise. Uh, there's those creatures uh, sort of will mark the way. So if you just follow the the winding creatures, you'll you'll be fine. Landmarks. Okay. Thanks. What uh, what time of day is it, Darcy? It is. Uh, you had arrived when there was still daylight, so it is probably getting to be um, late afternoon at this point. So it is not quite night yet. Uh, the sun would still be up, but um, it's maybe let's say three in the afternoon. Four. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, let's let's go um, on our way toward this place to get lodging. I will lament that I I really miss uh, I really miss home. Already don't like it here. Mm. How are the others feeling? Grandpa Iron is grinning at the snakes, watching to see if, how they're going to direct him. But uh... <laughs> and Alara, I, uh, I am, I am sympathetic to Callus, and and you know, just say, don't worry, we'll we'll get back in. I'm I'm very determined to get us back in these doors where we belong. Mm. Excellent. And Chem, how are you feeling? This is fine. Sure beats, you know, sleeping out in the dirt. So we're in a real civilized place. We got this. Excellent. So as you get to the, that big pole, there are indeed a number of uh, windy, clearly biomechanical, elongate creatures. Um, they're actually not very snake-like. They're actually more like those, um, uh, are they Zebs? The big furry mm-hmm. Uh, mammalian looking, but t- elongate serpentine bodies. Um, they look like tiny versions of these. Uh, yeah, I, I forget. What are they called? <laughs> I'm going to quiz you on your knowledge of Numenera creatures. Not Zev. It's not Zev. It's I know not that. Zev. Uh, <laughs> they, are, they are tiny furry mammals that are elongate and serpentine, and they greet you cheerily, and they start, uh, as, as you sort of come by them, uh, you see that the reason they are perhaps useful is that uh, this section of the, of the road seems to have um, some bits of Numenera that seem to be still very active and doing something and look a little spooky and dangerous. They're giving off strange energies. And so these uh, mammalian serpents are taking you through sort of a safe path as you uh, wind your way down. But it brings you to a new square that is very opulent. Um, there are... Uh, you, there's clearly uh, a hotel that is adver- advertising it as such um, and saying, you know, uh, vacancies and there's a, a, a number of people smoking on a big pipe in really nice clothing, sort of sitting outside and and looking lovingly up at the, the ta- at the palace. Um, let's see, as you um, if you, as, if you enter the hotel, uh, you notice that uh, there is let's, see, let's find something weird about this hotel because there's weird about something about everything in Numenera a little bit. Um, you notice that, uh, you see the shadow before you see the proprietor. So you walk in and there's this lovely, uh, sort of entryway and there's some, some seating and some little tables and there's, uh, some, there's a hallway that goes to the back that seems to be probably where some rooms would be. Um, and there's a spiral staircase off to the side, presumably to more floors and more rooms. Um, and you, it didn't, doesn't appear that anyone's in there at first, but there is a shadow of something. Uh, so... Uh, this that was a cool weirdness from uh, uh, the rain, uh, the right of rain person. So uh, this this shadow uh, is is spread over the sort of like the back booth and and 
is, is sort of moving toward you all, uh, but it does, isn't saying anything. But it looks like the shadow of a person who would, who would be invisible, like walking toward you. Um, and it, it sort of stands at attention uh, when it stops before you. Are you a person? Uh, uh, it seems to open its hands uh, a little bit and it says, uh, why, of course we are. We're all people here, aren't we? Uh, are you looking for lodging? Yes. Lovely. That we have. Uh, this, this person's, uh, apparently, uh, are any of you able to see invisible things? Is there any devices any of you have that I should know about? Probably I am telepathic. Okay, cool. Well, let me know if you're using any of telepathy. But uh, this this per person proprietor says uh, it is um, fifteen shins a night per person. Uh, we do have some of the finest beds in the entire city of Bodrov, uh, and uh, most people seem to be wanting to stay on the upper city at the sport. But of course, this is really where the the beauty of the city seems to shine through. So you've made an excellent choice coming here today. Um, may I assist you to some rooms? How many will you be taking? I look at the others and say, I have four shares. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Jim. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to shake my head and say, oh, you know, I think we, I think we are in the wrong location. We were looking for the restaurant. <laughs> uh, Where did the scholars stay? Says Grandpa. Oh no! <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you can. Thanks you can. Ruining read. my cover story, guys. <laughs> uh, you can see displeasure in this shadow, uh, and, and it says, um, <clears throat> "Well, you'll find the shadow back. You'll find the the scholars uh, uh, lodging back back the way you came, of course." Um, and they say. Uh, uh, but our, our cafe is one of the best. It has some very affordable options, of course. So, uh, good day. If you're not going to get rooms. <laughs> Yet another reason that I am so mad. They didn't even let us take our things with us. It's just ridiculous. I have a custom, you know, lack hide pillow on my bed at home. <laughs> very comfortable. And now I'm going to have to sleep on some, you know, Linen pillow. Allergies. Your hopes are very high with linen. <laughs> so I have, I have eight shins, guys, and I don't want to spend them all on one night's lodging. Um, we either need to figure out how to make some money quick, which is not that hard to do, or uh, we need to find a cheaper place to stay. Let's investigate the sport that Grandpa Iron's friend runs. That seems like a good way to make some money. He said he bet 40 shins on you. That's right. Yeah, Gazrava. throw money around a lot here. All right. Well, I know where Gazrava is, so if we want to head back that direction, I'm happy to jump in and try my hand at this uh, sport. Ooh. Uh, you are free to do so. So um, if you're going to go straight back up the city, it's easy to find your way back once the uh, mammalian serpent creatures guide you back through the safe safe zone. Um, <clears throat> when you get back up, the sun has gotten a little closer to setting, but it's the, the city is still very active. Um, can, can Chem describe a little bit more about this sport to know whether Grab Iron is actually a good or bad candidate? Uh, I'll fill him in on what I know. Great. Um now, I, I don't know, Chem, does, is this something that you tend to give much mind to? I almost want to see ask you to make a roll to see what you, how <laughs> accurate your knowledge of this is. You don't strike me as someone who's very interested in Gazrava. It's perfectly reasonable because I probably think of this as a corruption of a pursuit of knowledge. And like, oh, yes, we have to go do something so that, you know, the less intelligent people of the city will have something to get excited about throwing balls around and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So, uh, yes, if you will. An intellect roll, perhaps? Mm -hmm. yep. All right. I roll a two. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> so, but of course, um, you start describing uh, a lot of the details from the actual thing that it originated from, right? The trials, which is a lot of, um, you know, 
ideally you have some ability to move nanites around in physical space. You have to uh, very carefully adjust these. Well, first you have to go out and you have to craft a Gazrava ball. Uh, and But of course they'll, you know, for this sport, presumably they'll have some provided and then you, uh, you know, you hover it through through these hoops over and over again, and you proceed up to the next level and use heavier heavier balls, and then eventually they get to the one on one, uh, you know, uh, challenges. And so you you give all this information that's uh, probably some of it is related to the sport, but uh, is of no is definitely of not uh, <laughs> it doesn't really match with. Like the fact that you were told that it's a team, like, is this your team? Yeah, you don't know anything about the uh, sort of floor player version of this sport. So, but I'm I'm right though. I'm giving them the right information about what it's supposed to be about. Right. So oh, in just, my head, that's all that matters. So, but when you say four player, that means that um, it's not a single person. Okay. Well, maybe we could all throw in together and work as a team. That would be weird. <laughs> And Grandpa Iron, your friend at least thought you'd be very capable. So that's a good start. As we're standing here, I'm gonna lead I'm gonna lean into Callus. Callus, why do you do that you can make money easily? He said it was easy to make money. Um I uh you know, I'm I'm good at finding things that are valuable. <laughs> you'd be surprised that they unattended valuable items that get left around a city like this. Really? And nobody cares about, like nobody comes back and gets them, huh? Well, you know, they clearly didn't care about it because they left it unattended, but you know, you'd be surprised. Sure enough. If, if uh, sometimes people, you know, suddenly they see you have an interest in it, that they're suddenly all interested in it too, but that's, that's just the fickle nature of people. I see. <laughs> it is starting to, 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 to dawn on me exactly what Kellis is talking about. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> hey, it's <Okay>. effective. <laughs> it certainly seems a lot easier than playing some kind of ball or game or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty good at that stuff, but I, I sort of look we at the s- rest of the team. <laughs> or we could sit on a corner and sing or play an instrument. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, not me, I don't think. <laughs> hey, yeah, we could try that too. <laughs> Let's go to the Gazrava, what is it, an arena? Mm-hmm. Let's just take a look at it. And if it's something that we decide we don't want to do, then we can uh, learn a bit from Kalis about how to make money. All right. So as you get up that, that big... Uh, hewn staircase into the the sort of the top level outside of, of Bodrov. Um, and as some of you hop over that that solid water main path, um, you head in the direction of the sound of of fighting and 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 grunts and uh, things hitting each other and cheering on occasion. And um, as you as you wind your way past some uh, some smaller buildings, you it suddenly opens up and there is a a recessed uh, sort of bowl shaped um, uh, area with a flat bottom, uh, sort of a flat, uh, you know, uh, like floor to it and then seats all around it. And so you have to walk down these, you would have to walk down these seats to get to this center area where there are, you can see there are four people in elaborate kind of greens and blues and four people in, uh, sort of silvers and, and whites, uh, so, so, some kind of teams facing off and they are floating in this column. So they're not actually standing on that ground, but it's sort of as though that you are seeing a cylinder of, a of reduced gravity as they are sort of falling in slow motion, but then they shoot something so they can still move fast. It's not slowing down time, but it seems to be slowing down there as though they're moving through water or some kind of fluid. Um, and so you see uh, one person grab another by by the legs and hurl them in the direction of the other team. And uh, they've got this small silver ball and they push over an enemy member, an enemy, enemy team member, and they hook that ball into a, a little um, little silver hoop and you hear a ding and the crowd goes wild. Uh, so you can see that there's this strange game where you move around and there's uh, it bears some resemblance to what Chem told you, but uh, none of this uh, low weightlessness, spacey kind of uh, very full contact sport that you are currently seeing. 
Uh, so there's lots of people and there's um, there's clearly an area where there's like the next team waiting to go up down at the bottom outside of the field. Well, guys, do we want to give this a shot? Or do we want to try a Kalis approach? Let's, uh, is, I'm just going to turn to somebody nearby who's watching the game and say, how long does a game normally take? <laughs> Excellent. So uh, this person, um, it's a, it's like a young teen uh, boy, and he says, "Well, um, we're currently in the phase of uh, the, you know, we're in the orange phase, and so these are fairly short games." And he starts like rattling off, rattling off a lot of facts and a lot of like statistics almost at you. Maybe not statistics, oh. but like you know, Charity. factoids are coming at I you. Interrupt him! Like I have no time for that. Like I asked you a question: How long is this match going to take? Uh, you you look very serious and spooky, and you've got that wild Numenera helmet on you, don't you? Yes. Uh, he is sufficiently cowed and says, um, there are 21 more minutes left in this match. Uh, the next match will begin, and we'll play for 33 minutes. And he starts uh, I am, stepping away. <laughs> I am already uh, disappearing into the thickest parts of the crowd. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was going to suggest that gives him about half an hour to figure out, you know, what money making he's going to do while we. She. Yep. She. Right. Sorry. Right. Yes. Perfect. All right. So let's get some uh, some rolls with that. So the the three of you go uh, to maybe sit and watch it, or go to find uh, Grandpa Iron's friend. Is that what you look for? That's what I want to do. Find him. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so you're able to uh, uh, pick through the crowd, and there are these um, these long. Uh, paths down and so you actually have a really good field of view and so you you catch this you know big uh big guy with lots of scars on his face and ch munch munching on this another new snack of of metal and and wires uh and like belly laughing and there's sort of a little crowd around him uh it's a different guy there's two different people who are eating machines same guy oh it's the same guy <laughs> sorry oh, okay i may have described right. so it Numenera tide pod challenge <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh terrible excellent so uh you catch sight of him but why don't i get a, a roll from kalis as you are uh i assume you are trying to find your mark or yes what are, you, yeah what is this role for um if you are like you you sound like you want to steal a thing. That sounds like it has a chance of failure. So uh, the role would be for find. Presumably, would you want to roll to find a good person to steal something good off of? Oh, okay. There's lots um, of people I, who don't look like they have a lot of money. So picking a mark is maybe a first step. Um, sure. Uh, what I'd actually like to do yeah. is go through and just find the loosest pockets that I can, and uh, <laughs> even if there's only one or two shins in them. Um, I'd rather go for the easy grab than than the more difficult one. Okay. Um, but uh, I can I can do that as perception if you'd like. Uh, uh, I think that's a fine. Um, I think if you're just looking for the easy marks, I'm not going to require a roll. You are you have an experience in that, right? Uh, I guess. Do um, you have any skills in it, or is it just you've been doing it a while? Uh, I, I'm, I'm skilled in lots of things like that, but not specifically in pickpocketing. Okay. Um, but, uh, and I'm happy to use effort. I just, uh, am I just, I need you to let me know. Am I, am I sizing people up or am I actually picking pockets? Cause it'd be two different stats, right? It is a level one difficulty to size up easy marks. So you can spend effort and automatically succeed or tell me a skill. I will spend effort to automatically succeed. Perfect. You find a bunch of marks. <laughs> okay. uh, now let's see if you if anything bad happens while you are actually doing the pickpocketing, which is okay. more dexterous stuff. And I will also use effort on this as well, assuming cool. this is speed, right? Yep. Uh, all right. I roll in nine, and I'm using uh, a level of effort. Okay. Cool. Um, so you are going to get uh, you as you as you work through your marks and spe take it take a few minutes to quickly. How what, what's your is it like bumping into people or how do you do it? Uh, I, I focus mostly on on trickery rather than sleight of hand. Actually, um, so yeah, it's more like jostling people, you know, drawing their attention over that way while I can pick pick the pocket on the other side, kind of thing. Cool. Uh, you through through doing this uh, over you know a, a few short minutes, it does seem like people kind of 
brought money. You, you, even the people who don't usually have a lot of money on them maybe brought money to, to place bets. So these pockets are uh, are doing pretty good for you. So you get uh, 33 uh, shins sort of in pretty quick order. There was one person who um, was just maybe has had quite a bit to imbibe that day and the pockets were just like asking to be taken, really, Kalis. All right. So I make my way back over to my friends and I say, I'm starting to like this city. <laughs> I am I am looking both suspicious and intrigued, like <laughs> because I I find this really fascinating. This is really interesting to me. <laughs> Excellent. Um, if you if the the rest of you are down by your your uh, friend and Grandpa Iron, had you given him a name? I, I couldn't hear it. What was his name? I did give him a name, and I believe it was something like uh, Maseron, which I will write down. Maseron. Yeah. Uh, so Maseron is thrilled to see only three of you uh but uh but he says grandpa iron i'm 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 so glad to see you, you you're here for the best part of the match he says watch okay i, I go uh who do, where do i place my bets i say <laughs> <laughs> and he says you gotta see uh and, and just as you see that um you see that uh the the one team that's maybe about it looks like they're kind of winning question mark uh, is is pushing one of its you know has, has hurled one of their teammates with with the Gazrava ball for that final uh, point score <laughs> and you see uh, off in the distance someone go very very still from the other team and they seem to get uh, a little a couple little um, sparks of light start shining around their head as the the Gazrava ball gets hurled impossibly into a new direction and sort of uh, just as the timer goes. And so he, uh, your uh, messer on sort of stands up in, in anger and, and starts stomping around. But he says, uh, come now, Grandpa Iron, let's go play some more bets. Um, and Kalis could probably have snuck in there during that moment uh, as you were going to finish your thieving at the end of the, the, the game. Was that legal? What that person just did? Can you can you just do that? I, I'm afraid so. There are there are some esoteric <sighs> rules about what uh, what direct kinds of contact you can and can't do with using the the nanites and other uh, Numenera nonsense. But uh, in terms of affecting just the Gazrava balls, pretty much anything goes. Uh, deaths are not unheard of, although uh, considered poor form. <laughs> Fair. I'm more upset that he called the Numenera nonsense. Oh, excellent. Uh, so there's a little stand where uh, there seems to be a, a couple people <clears throat> hastily t- exchanging uh, shins of various sizes and types and, you know, holding holding some up to the to the light and, and bending some and, and rejecting some shins. And uh, there's sort of a, you know, a, a burgeoning little business here taking bets. Uh, but there's also this is not far from where you seem to you see some other teams getting ready to enter the the field. So is this something where I could play? What was he gonna? I say, well, you know, I ask him in my grandpa same sort of way. Were you gonna bet on me or or what? Oh, I don't understand. What what? Uh... <clears throat> I think you should enter. I think the four of you should uh, enter at the 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 junior uh... league and and see what happens. I think that you know. Only knowing what I know of Grandpa Iron, I th- I have to imagine those who travel with him. Um, must be well, you know me in my day, I could take on any challenge, but uh, I'm afraid my companions might not be uh, quite up to it. <clears throat> I could, of course, get uh, get together some other uh, fine fine young folks that I know, but uh, if you're in for it, there's good money to be made. I look at Chem. I'm in for it. I mean, I've got the mental superiority to outthink all of our opponents. Yeah, that's that's the spirit, uh, Nano Man. <laughs> uh, Alira, are you are you still with the, with the, with me with us? Oh yes. Art and Kalis moved came back up to us. So, oh, Kalis is muted though. When I when I'm done, I come back. Yes. All right, <clears throat> the the two of you uh, are are going to be in the fray. What about the other two? You going to watch from the sidelines or come join us and live the thrill of a fight today? Uh, I look warily at the at the sun. What what time of day is it? Yeah, the the it's getting to be uh you know maybe a, a little under an hour from sunset. And when is the game? Uh, we I'd be able to get you in. <clears throat> 
uh, with I could probably get you in the next game in about <clears throat> it looks like ten minutes. I could I know who to talk to. I'm I'm quite well respected in these circles. We could squeeze you in. I know you have business in the city. I'm sure. And what do we get again when we win? Shins, my darling, shins, and respect and glory. Uh, the the usual prize is um, <clears throat> a mere thirty shins, but. Uh, it's it's the bets that I'd be willing to make on your behalf that uh, would really Is sing for you. That legal? Of course this not. Game's, this <laughs> game seems wholly questionable. <laughs> not legal, <clears throat> but expected. Odrav is a much wealthier city than I'm used to, I think. Um, seems like the shins flow like water here. <laughs> um, Do you think oh. they're worthless? Well, clearly, if a if a stay if a stay in a hotel costs fifteen shins, yeah. yes, they're worth less. Interesting. So we just get them all, and then when we go back and kick the Ian priests in the nuts, and return to our city. We'll be rich on top of it. This is going to be great. <laughs> all right. Well, at the very least, Chem and I are in. Who else is in? Of course. Have you seen me do my thing at the at the? With the traveling minstrels, of course I'm in. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I think I am gonna have to pass. Um, I've I've uh, I've got some business that I have to take care of. I'll spare. <laughs> <laughs> you, we could we could help you after we could help you find things. Um. So are we? Uh, before you jump into this match uh are we going to wh where are we going to spend the night are we going back to the scholars quarters or There's something yes. in the middle oh is there so is there something in the middle it's a big city the the woman had just given you two options that were nearby right so there's presumably some other options that would be in the middle messeron can, right. can give you you know messeron could even give you the name of a place you could go lodge at for a reasonable price. I'll, I will ask him. I will say, where where is a place where we can get a, a a decent night's sleep for maybe more like eight chins a night? Uh, he taps his, his lips, thinking, and and he says, "Uh, well, you'll want uh uh the Valma's rest then. Um, it's a it's a lovely little place. Uh, right right uh." Right near the entrance to the city, um, off to the right in that district, and you you will know it by the uh, glowing uh, purple tetrahedron that um, that uh, hovers before it. Great, uh, fairly um, so safe. Although I would lock your doors and any other protections. You know how it is. Sure. <laughs> yeah, like your more items than attended. <laughs> 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 um. So. Guys, what I would like to do then, I'm going to go there and I will get rooms for everyone. Um, and uh, and then I will we'll see you in the morning. All right. All right. I'd be up for sharing a room if somebody wanted to save some money. I don't have a preference. I'm open. If, I suppose it depends on if we win or lose this match. <laughs> I will pull out just a... Handful of shins, oh. and I will say, "Don't worry, I'll cover. I'll cover Whoa. the expenses tonight." <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, uh, work fast. so I we feel like Kalis is settling in, maybe a little too well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna take five and grab some more water, and then we will jump back into the uh, the big fight, of course. All right, uh, we will be right back, everybody. So don't go far. And welcome back to uh, Numenera Echoes Linger. Ooh. Uh, if you're just joining us, we are coming in on a fun and exciting moment as Kalis has gone off to do Kalis things, I guess, and secure some rooms uh, <laughs> after having uh, mysteriously come into quite a bit of shins. Uh, so good for Kalis. Uh, and the rest of the team has been recruited by an old pal of Grandpa Irons to go fight in the 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 current festival of the sport of uh, Gazrava. So uh, the three of you are outfitted with, um, you're sort of offered some uh, like, you know, clothing that have different colors on them. So you're sort of wrapped together and there is a, 
a fourth uh, NPC who gets added to your t- your, your foursome, right? Uh, so um, uh, Messerin uh, says, um, now I, I, I usually stick outside of these myself to carry out the, um, the other arrangements for, uh, he, you know, nudges over to the, the bedding area. Uh, but, but if Grandpa Iron, if you need me, uh, I'll be there for you. I, I, I'd be happy to have you at my side again, Maceron. <laughs> All right. He says, uh, uh, you're right for old time's sake, we should do it. Uh, so he sends some, uh, some like, young and, and you know like kind of the, the youngest of the crew that sort of hangs around Maseron. uh he says now you know he sort of hands a, a, a bag full of jinglies uh to to this <laughs> to this kid and, and starts quietly instructing him uh the rest of you are offered there are not really weapons but there are some um like kind of protective uh, rubberized materials that you see a number of people putting on, sort of like uh, shin and elbow guards, things like that. And so, uh, you know, I assume you just are happy to get outfitted with. Should I not be bringing my great axe into this competition? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> it is again frowned upon and considered bad form. And you know, all right. <laughs> so, all right, let's figure out what we're all good at. So we've seen this bout. I am super good at acrobatic stuff. What else do we have? What are you guys good at? Let's, I'm good at hitting. Even without your giant weapon? Yeah. Okay. I'm fast. Okay, you are fast. Okay, good. Chem? Uh, I'm smart, and I can punch things with my brain. <laughs> Master is that allowed? <laughs> I, 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 saw, I saw that guy with the sparkles around his head. Maybe you could do that. I'll work on the sparkles. <laughs> the sparkles are really the important part here. <laughs> All right. So, and then Masron, what are you good at? What do you What do you bring to the team? Uh, he's very like, excited. Uh, I I bring I I you know when I was uh when I was participating more actively in these I was the the hurler. Uh, so I'm very good at picking you up by the feet and hurling you vast distances. Does that make me the hurled? Is that how this works? <laughs> <laughs> it very well might. <laughs> All right. Okay. I feel better now. Now, any Great. strange abilities you have uh, that are rather deadly, you know, uh, especially any of that, that nanite business, uh, just be sure to try to aim it at an object, perhaps the Gazrava ball, as opposed to directly to the target. Uh, you know, keeping one level of indirection will uh, help keep you in favor and not get you kicked out of the, the fight. Not that anyone's been kicked out of a fight in, oh, quite a while now. Things get pretty bloody down there. Oh, the team does need a name. Oh, goodness. Mm. Uh, all right, chat. Let us know what, what good team name you think of. <laughs> Make something about kicking the and Priest's butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Calibre sucks. No, that's, I'm not even willing to go that far. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I kind of like Team Echo, Grandpa and the Kids. These are good. <laughs> Gak. That's very cute. Uh, all right. What do you think? Fistful of shins. Oh, yeah. That, that's that's it. Looks like the winner. Yeah, okay. That's the winner. And here we have Fistful of shins. And the crowd, uh, you know, kind of gets a little excited. They see your your old pal, uh, Master on there, and they know that they're in for something good. Uh, are there any other preparations you're making as you're sort of making your, your way down to the outside? Anything you're going to do to yourselves or prepare before you step through that, that weird field where it will make you kind of float? I'm going to activate my ward so I have armor just in case somebody does any cheater moves. Excellent. And I'm going to use my telepathy of sorcery to mentally connect myself to all three of the three other players on our team so we can nice. quietly without giving away our strategies. Not a bad idea. Oh, nice. I'm going to use my time dilation nodule, <laughs> which nice. makes it. Which uh, makes it for 28 hours, uh, so I can ease speed defense by two steps. So if someone tries to take out Grandpa Iron, he's going to be moving like a, well, <laughs> much faster than a grandpa. <laughs> Dang. All right. So can we, um, so what is this ball made out of? Yeah. Uh, like, is it, I guess what I'm asking is it, does it have any electrical elements at all? Uh, it. It it does seem to when you when you end up uh, they they let you all sort of hold it so you can 
you know, manipulate it before you go into the field. Um, and they're a little different than the ones that you would have uh, experienced, uh, Chem. So it it has a lot of little strange grooves. Um, it it has a strange uh, weight to it, and they 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 tell you that it will it will feel lighter once you're in there. Um, mm. And whether that's just the effect of it, or it, it they tell you it seems to move differently once it's in there. Um, and as you as you move it around, you can feel it has a little like almost like the weight moves as though there were a liquid inside or some sort of stuff flowing from one side to the other, like or sand, you know. Um, and so you're, you're trying to ascertain if it has electricity in it, right? Um, yeah, I was trying to ascertain if it might be responsive to my, um, rides of lightning effects. Yeah. Uh, why don't you give me a roll as you sort of tinker with it? Oh, okay. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am, um, a specialized in Numenera, if this is Numenera and, um, that's probably it. And I roll a 15. Okay, very good. Uh, so as you, what, what do you do? Do you give it a little electricity or? I don't because, you know, that has backfired on me in the past. So <laughs> <laughs> I would prefer to see what I can learn without without jolting it first. <laughs> Excellent. Um, as, you, as, as you play with it, and especially with your training in Numenera, uh, you get a sense that um, there's, a, there's a little component that uh, is actually, you know, it looks like it's very static object, but then... There's a little piece that is, uh, it's is flush with the the rest of the surface of the ball, but is uh, a, it's like a little dial that is ticking, and so uh, oh. you know that 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 there's something it does. It's related to that ticking, uh, but it doesn't seem, you know, as you're sort of listening to it or experiencing the the electricity, you feel like it's not fully really engaged yet. But something something ticks, something moves, cool. something counts, something. Great. All right, we got this. <laughs> All right, and the other team uh, is going to be. Let's. What's what? If if anyone has a good idea for what the other team should be, um, I think there is a. Yeah, I think one of them is a um, is a a. Let's see, who should it be? I love those. Uh, <laughs> let's see, one is dressed like an Ithsin, so these big bird creatures with all sorts of like, uh, kind of really brightly colored feathers. Um, and so they've got, they've got this elaborate getup with all these feathers on it and uh, very clearly, uh, you know, looks very bright and happy. Uh, the other three seem to have, are, are part, of, part of the team. And so they are also like very cute, charming looking creatures that they're sort of either have face, like face paint on or other things. And they are indeed like named- Like What? Like- Like Itson. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and they are named Team Slaughter. And so Team Slaughter uh, comes up against a uh, fistful of shins, and uh, the crowd is getting really excited now that you're finally about to enter. Um, and you, uh, they, they sort of say, "We want a good, clean fight, everybody. Uh, none of uh, no, no Numenera nonsense against any direct uh, uh, participant. Everything else is pretty much go. And uh, once the timer is done, uh, that's the last chance you'll have to get one of these balls through one of those hoops." Uh, and so there are there are two balls sort of in play in your in, in at least your match. So there's a little bit of chaos going on. So uh, you you are ready to step through the field, and uh, they sort of they uh, they make some some noise. A bell goes off, and suddenly you are sort of pushed over the edge by by people who are on the outside into this field, and you start feeling yourself get very very light and airy. Like as, even as you take a step, you accidentally kind of move a little too far up in the air. Uh, and uh, uh, Masaran is is super excited, and and uh, and is he li- linked into you telepathically too, or just the three? Oh, all, all four of our teammates. Oh, nice. All He's, four of us on our team. He says, "This is great, uh, Grip Iron. You never told me about this trick. That would have been so helpful." Uh, all right, uh, you have one ball, and they have one ball, and there are a number of hoops arrayed sort of circularly around this space, and so. Uh, let us, uh, what's, what's your plan of attack? So are you just going to try to score more than them? Or are you going to mess with the other players? Uh, let's, let's get sort of an initiative going cause you can, we'll, uh, um, we'll work together, but mm-hmm. I have an ability. Uh, okay. Well, initiative first. Oh, and that'll be 17 for grandpa iron. Okay. Nice. Oh boy, we got a one. <laughs> a ten. Okay, great. Oops. <laughs> I got so excited I can't even move, apparently. 
Excellent. Uh, so first we're going to go with Grandpa Iyer, and you got you got out ahead of the rest of them. Well, I do have an ability um, which I can use. It's called Fleet, uh, and it requires a speed point. But I basically I can trigger it as it's an enabler, so I can actually move a short distance and take an action. Nice. Um, nice. Or I can move a long distance and, uh, you know, wow. use effort. So how far away is the opposite hoop? Uh, so the, the opposite hoop is going to be... Uh, uh, so there's there's one that's actually kind of you know you started on opposite opposite sides. Uh, any hoop will do. So it's not like the other oh. team has hoops. It's there's you know let's say twelve hoops arrayed around a circle at the top. Oh. Uh, okay. But you just all have to scramble and fight <laughs> for them. Uh, so the hoop that's directly above you, um, and because of this strange uh, lightness of being <laughs> that you're experiencing right now, uh, you can your your fleet of foot is going to get you like. Uh, eight that that action treat it like a uh what, what does it let you do so it's you it lets you move well i can go a short, short distance and take a regular action or i can go a long distance and use effort to take a hindered action cool so the yes. height of this place is probably longer than a short uh distance away but because you're very light as you jump you can go farther so let's say that you can you can with that ability you can move and you can jump and get to it and do an action there so just to, the you know this have is to Get this is not a lot of strategy, but because I rolled high on the initiative, I, Grandpa Heron's going to make a break for it <laughs> and try and grab the ball and use this this uh, fleet effort for a long distance uh, and make a hindered. He's going to use effort to make a hindered. Attempt. Nice. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. So uh, it is, it is going to be, and you're just going to try to do so by your own jump, right? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. He doesn't know what's going on. He's he's excited. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the blood rushing through your veins. Uh, so it's going to be a level five difficulty. Um, so it will be it would be four normally, but you're hindered, right, in that action. Cool. Right. So uh, oh, so it's four, but I'm hindered five. But I am using effort, so I guess it brings back it back four. to four. Apparently. All right. Um, and unfortunately, I am only tier one, so I can only use one level of effort. Right. <clears throat> um, just make make sure I calculate how much speed I'm using here. All right. All right. So a roll of uh No. Uh, you know what? I have a lot of XP. I'm gonna re-roll that one. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet, sweet XP. Nice. So uh that's one XP down. Let's try that again. <laughs> Oh, 12. Uh, oh. Hey, perfect. So, uh, uh, do you want to narr narrate that for me of how it almost goes um, So I, uh, Grandpa Iron, he's, 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 he jumps. It looks like he's going to just jump straight out because he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. But at the last minute, he uh, uses that XP to kind of uh, grab and kind of twirl around and redirect himself towards a different, uh, a different hoop than people maybe thought he was going for. Excellent. Uh, and as you're doing that, you, so you're holding that ball, uh, and so you, you you sort of turn in, in you, using the ball, you almost like push against it, and there's there's some weird field where it's you're not just sailing through space. You can almost use the ball to to shift your momentum in different ways. And so you, yeah, as you as you turn to the, to go to the hoop that they didn't expect, uh, you absolutely get past the one person who had tried to kind of get in your way, even though you they were behind you anyway, because you just took off right away. Uh, and so you slam uh, a ball through hoop and, uh, there's a ding and there's a, you all feel like an electricity go through your body a little bit. Uh, it feels uh, tingly and interesting and, uh, tactile and a little perplexing. Uh, but yes. All right. So one point for the fistful of shins and, uh, do you, do, yeah. do you hang up there? Do you, uh, are you hanging onto the ball? What are you doing? Uh, I guess I don't know what I was supposed to do with the ball, but I know I throw it through the hoop, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, but do you hang on the, uh, so you throw it through the hoop. And so oh yeah. I do a down. little victory, uh, <laughs> spin through the air. Excellent. All right. So you're still lurking up there. Pirouette. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, team Slaughter, however, is having none of that. So, um, one of them, uh, you see start, start muttering, uh, to themselves and they are going to, uh, Grandpa Iron, you start feeling, uh, um, that, that hoop that you were, uh, sort of nearby starts heating up. That's giving off like, like burning hot, uh, energy. It doesn't, oh. it doesn't look very different it, except the air around it seems to sizzle. Um, and it's going to d do damage to you unless you can, uh, somehow, uh, help yourself or, or, or run away. So you're gonna stay stay in your tactical position up up top, or you're gonna try to like kick off and float down. Uh, 
sorry, my computer's oh. moving around. I had to unmute. Um, I uh, I will try and well, yeah, I'll try and kick off. I guess to try and float down. I don't have the ball anymore though, so right. I'm not sure what quite to do. I'll, I'll try and Batman my way away from uh, the <laughs> version. Cool. So there's the hoop in it. They're sort of suspended on, on some poles. So you can kind of try to hit the part of the pole that doesn't look like it's as boiling hot. Um, so right, why just, don't you make me a uh, like speed roll to sort of maneuver right. yourself in the right way to get away? Um, I'm just going to do a straight up roll. Great. <laughs> I roll three, so. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so your, I think your your boot maybe can't gra- get purchase, and so you're starting to feel this these waves of heat, uh, uh, starting to um, really irritate bits of your metallic and and otherwise machinery joints, right? Um, um, yeah, I have a little armor built great. into me. Cool. Uh, so it would be four points of damage, but uh, okay. minus any armor if you've got some shielding. So uh, I take I take half that. Okay. Uh, you see that one uh, with a big curly mustache uh, and uh, and lots of furry like accoutrement uh, <laughs> sort of smile at you. Oh, all right. Uh, another two seem to take the third, and they are uh, trying to uh, hurl it through um, toward like toward one one of the hoops. Um, there's you, I'm gonna I'm gonna represent this by if you if you want to take a defensive action getting in their way you can you can try to do that. I totally want that. Cool. I'm in that. Um, so I have I'm trained in speed defense. I don't know if that helps. I'm mm-hmm. assuming it might. Yep. And um, balance and careful action or physical performing arts. Ooh. I don't know if one of those also helps. Depending on um, what you're doing. Uh, I am so it's so it's actually like it's sort of like lightened gravity is kind yeah. of the space that we're moving in. So I am I'm gonna like <laughs> sort of run up to who's closest to me on the ground right now. Uh, there are uh, th- there's sort it, of on the, my team. I mean on your team, uh, presumably uh, Chem or Masamam. Where what, what were you doing, Chem? You you they're probably both really close. So maybe Masamam is closer. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna run towards Chem and be like boost me and just like run run and and see, have him boost me up so that I can get up there and. Like try to intercept these people who are coming to the basket. Awesome. And hoping that Jim responds appropriately. <laughs> awesome. Which I'm kind of nervous about and I'm regretting my decision as soon as I make it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, well, fortunately, so- I'm very smart. <laughs> Uh, do you actually boost me? I guess we'll find out. Uh, I'm going to use a level of effort too. So that's def- speed defense plus one of those uh, performing arts balance plus a uh, level of effort. And I roll a two. <laughs> okay. Oof. But, you know, I think it. I think it's the com- combination of your two roles, right? If you, you need a booster and a boosty, Chem, do you want to, you, if you're going to go along boost with it, me, give me that roll. Boost roll. me. <laughs> yes. Uh, what sort of role do I need to make? Could I like think of the, like, do some geometry in my head and like the optimal way to go and push against her foot if she jumps. And I feel like this is a pretty perfect moment for your like Sherlockism. Uh, I'm, I'm calculating trajectories and being a big old nerd about it. I would allow it. <laughs> All right. I will apply a level of effort for cool. this. Because I think Lair ah. is providing like the strength and you're kind of providing the trajectory, hopefully. Okay. Well, I think I'm getting used to how this whole lower gravity straight. thing works. So I'm going to expend... <laughs> One of my XP to do a better roll. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I rolled a 15 and wow. I applied a level of effort. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, so, Lair, I'm thinking maybe you don't look quite as graceful, but you just acted out of <laughs> instinct. And so you go, uh, but uh, Chem, how does it look when you, uh, do you want to narrate how you perfectly line her up to I've intercept? Like, yeah, I've like kneel down and I have my hands kind of like this and I point at my knee so you're going to like take a jump off of my knee and then as you're leaping up I'm also going to assist with my hands and then and then I'm also going to jump up as well to add my momentum Ooh, so, nice. that 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 was the effort that was the effort coming was in glorious beautiful uh so you uh Lair so you are sailing through the air uh and you intercept this uh this person that they person. are uh 
they have thrown, who's holding onto the ball and who is looking very pleased with themselves and focused on the hoop that they're aiming for. And then at the last second sort of catches you out of the corner of their eye and turns. Uh, what do you do? Are you just going to grab them? Are you just going to grab wanna, the ball? What I really want is the ball. I really okay. want to grab the ball. So at the very least, I'm going to try to knock them out of their trajectory and cool. try to grab a hold of the ball at the same time. Because I don't really have a good sense for how I'm coming down. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like now that I'm up here, which is awesome, I don't really know what's next. Perfect. Uh, so I think that you can uh, sort of knock them out of the way, but you, uh, in, in this sort of phase, you're kind of tumbling through the air with them, and uh, we're going to be in the uh, your turn and and Chem's turn, sort of now. So and and cool. your uh, and your your buddy, um, who I've called like eight different names now, uh, Messeron. I called him Massamon because I'm I hungry, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Messeron uh, is whooping from below, very impressed at, at your show. Uh, what he's doing is he's grabbing, he's going after the ball that had, that Grandpa Iron had thrown. And so uh, he's he's sort of securing that. Uh, all right, so Lair is tumbling with this person. And I think, uh, yeah, so it's your turn. You can try to, lots of things you could do. What are you thinking of? So you're sort of still grappling with her. You don't have the ball is that, yet. Is that me? Yeah. No. Oh, Okay. Um, so let's see. So Grandpa Iron is kind of below me now. Uh, and then, uh, yes, because Grandpa Iron is, uh, is, has kicked himself down. So he's basically near the ground. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna try it. Can I, like, it's, I sense that, can I throw this even though the gravity is low? Or do, do I sense that, like, trying to throw a thing in this weird gravity is just gonna be bizarro? Um, you can throw stuff. It's it's weird, but uh, it mostly just goes farther. You can totally try to. All right, I'm going to try to throw it to to Grandpa Aaron since he's already on the ground. And he's he's got he's sort of stationary and maybe ready to try to do again what he did last time. Cool. Uh, I will holler, <laughs> oh, Grandpa Aaron, catch <laughs> and toss it. Um, do I need to make a roll for that yeah. for my aim? <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, I have balance and careful movement and physical performing arts, and I roll an eighteen. Wow. Okay. Super cool. And this is, you know, this is weird combat. This is Darcy's weird non-combat combat. combat. Uh, And so I feel like in my heart, that 18 gave you the two extra damage you needed to just whip that ball uh, (laughs) in a precise, perfect fashion uh, to to Chem. So uh, so I think Chem... to Grandpa Iron. Sorry, to Grandpa Iron, right, yeah. All right, Grandpa Iron, uh, you now have a ball. Uh, Chem, what are you going to do with your turn? So, uh, and it's about to roll, it's... It's about to roll over to be the top of the round again. So the ball is right, yay big? Yep. Do I think if I had to, I could hit it with an onslaught to kind of knock it in a, in a direction? Absolutely. Okay. You could, uh, absolutely. Are there any balls that are in play right now that uh, would be, if I did that, I could knock them in the direction of one of my teammates? Ooh, so actually Grandpa Iron has one and uh, uh, your friend um, Messeron has the other. So okay. who has had just gotten it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to wait yeah. until one of them gets it through a hoop, and then I'm going to try and knock it closer to one of my own teammates. Ooh, cool! Yeah. I like that a lot. All right, so it's going to be Grandpa Iron again. So and you have a ball since you were so well set up by Alara. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, so I imagine. So what? What's the lay of the opposite team? Are they kind of guarding what I did where I was last time? Um, yeah, so the, 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 the two that had thrown someone, um, are now, uh, like both standing very still and they seem to be, uh, they're looking at you. They don't like you and they look like they're planning something against you. Um, yeah. they All have right. not moved so toward I'm, you, but they're planning. <laughs> uh, Grandpa Iron is going to be a little bit more wily this time. Well, okay. he, he set them up to make them believe he's going to do something. And now that we have this mental communication between each other, yeah. I'm going to tell everyone, I'm going to do a, a, a feint, right? I'm going to go for a, a thing, and at the last minute, I'm going to throw it to, uh, uh, I don't know, whichever one of you. I sent a Lyra, I sent a Lyra a, uh, an XP before, so I'm going to, I'm going to throw the ball to you uh, at the last minute. So that is what I'm going to attempt to do. Cool. Cool. And I'm actually going to use effort to throw, you know, Perfect. using a speed rather than actually trying to get the ball in. Awesome. So. That right. is my that is my goal, and I guess I don't know if that requires any uh, uh, deception on my part to try and f- to to pretend to do something and do something else. Yeah, fake 
guy. Yeah, I think you could. Uh, I think skills that could come in to play are like maybe deception or just, uh, you know, you're sort of you could just be really accurate, right? Like even if it didn't work, if you're so accurate, it could slip past them, um, uh, even if they didn't believe it. So, uh, but it's going to be a level four task to sort of one way All right, or so it's just one, one, one task. All right. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's go with speed then, because that's what I have at an edge in. Yeah. And I jump up, pretend, and then I whip it to Alira, who I've mentally told ahead yeah, of time to, to be ready. Yeah, to ready um, I, I used effort as well. Great. Um, uh, and with, with effort, uh, I do manage to get a, uh, uh, I get an 11. So I do manage to, to get level. Perfect. Uh, beautiful. So, uh, that is, that ball is hurling, hurtling toward Alara <laughs> when the two, uh, who had been focused on grandpa iron, uh, unleash their attack. So they are, uh, um, what, what do you have on you? So you've got, you've got some armor. Um, what do you have any, like, uh, do you have any stuff? Yeah, what would you wear? What are you wearing, Grandpa Iron? <laughs> Who are you wearing? Tell I us hope, the I hope that. <laughs> well, I'm not dressed. I don't didn't wear my cosplay of, of a of a big Numenera creature, uh, so I probably am just wearing my metal body. I put my stuff down so I didn't have an axe to. Yeah. You know, so whatever stuff they gave me, actually, whatever okay, the cool. ads are. I yeah, find. then uh, I think a stripe of paint down the side of my face. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so I think you feel your uh, your knees. Uh, getting locked uh, there the the knee pads you have on seem to be stiffening um, so why don't you give me a like might uh, defense roll to sort of like bust through the the constraining effects of them or uh, you could try possibly something more speed based where you like try to rip them off but it's starting to like constrain and strangle and hold your uh, your shin and your knee together and your uh, thigh together meaning you would fall very awkwardly and terribly uh, my, I would definitely do a might uh, defense roll or a task, whichever one you think uh, is better. I I'll try and um, can I use might to just rip rip these things off? Yeah, I think so. All right, so I apply a first. level of effort to that task. Uh, oof, almost went off the table. I roll a natural eighteen. So wow, okay, cool. That uh, this you can feel it straining as it's you know it's really nanite enhanced uh, muckery. There seems to be something. Uh, with a, a strength that feels stronger than, you know, someone just trying to hold you there. It's, but, but you are able to, uh, with your, you know, endo exoskeleton situation, uh, uh, like, you know, the, and the, the audience seems to like see what's happening and there's gasps and then, yeah, you, su you succeed in taking it off. Are you like, do you just like tear it off and hold it up or make a big show of it? Or are you? Focused? Yeah, I tear it off and I shake it at the other team. Oh, nice. All right. The, the, you, the team is going wild and uh, Masaran looks at you like that's that's what's going to, you know, that, that's what's going to whip up the, the crowd into a frenzy and get us free drinks all night is what he says telepathically. <laughs> he loves it. Um, OK, so uh, the ball is uh, hurting toward toward uh, Alara um, and it was a really good throw. So you're able to catch it. But what are you going to do on this end? All right. So am I where am I coming down in the gravity? Like where am I in relation to the yeah. hoops at this point? So I think you are still kind of coming down. I think you would uh but you have the ball, right? Uh so right. so now you have something to push against, but you and the person you stole a ball from is is really nearby. And so okay. anything you're gonna try to do is really trying to get around them. Uh okay. so you can kick off there, you know, there's a pole nearby to kick off, there's the ball, there's that person to kick off, but it's yeah, just I'm getting away from them. I'm going to kick off that person, right? Because I like my my background <laughs> is working with other people in like the the troop, so yeah. that seems totally natural to me. So That's I'm going to really kick off that idea. person toward uh, toward the hoop. I love and that. Hope for the best. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So um, I balance and careful movement, physical performing arts. I will I might as well apply a level of effort yeah. as well. And I'm going to roll a seventeen. Wow, you guys Ooh. are are beautiful. Awesome. After that too, I was. <laughs> I was very nervous. Yeah. So I think because you you're still a little bit in the air and uh, you you did so well, you are able to to kick off and and reach a hoop to to throw it through. Uh, so tell me what that looks like. So you. So I am super graceful this time. <laughs> this yeah. time, and so I I probably like I'm feeling confident enough that I give it a little bit of flourish and I like sort of just give it some power going through the hoop. Um, I don't hang on to the hoop because I don't really understand what happened with Grandpa Iron, but that didn't yeah. look fun. So I'm I'm gonna come back down. Uh, cool. with this and flair. But this might be Chem's opportunity as Chem was waiting for a teammate to get a ball through the hoop. What are you doing, Chem? So you, do you have a ball right now, Alara? 
Are you aiming to get one? Okay. No, I, I just put one through the hoop. So there's okay, one great. kind of going through. So actually, would it be better for me to use Onslaught to try and knock the ball away? Or could I use Hedge Magic to bring it to me or somebody else? Ooh. Ooh. Which would be more if you're, if you're asking the teammates what you should do, I would say deflecting their balls from going in is kind of a good thing to do while, while the rest of us try and make our own points. But if no one's sure. doing anything, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the that's one that's most at risk is uh, uh, Maseran or, or Maseran had, you know, had a ball and was uh, and was making a play sort of uh, uh, in, in an area that nobody was right in right away. And one of the uh, the team slaughter uh, had had gotten underneath him and seemed to be uh, uh, like pulling him down somehow. And so he was he was getting really close to a hoop and is, is now being pulled into the grasp of this uh this uh, other teammate really quickly. So that's the so one that's telepath- at risk. So telepathically, I'm going to tell him, go ahead and throw it at the hoop and I will assist getting it in. Uh, you you can feel like the, the waves of, uh, <laughs> that's, there's no way that's going to work. But he says, you know, he says, uh, uh, all right. And he, um, so he, you know, the, the guy who's the the uh, person who's pulling him in is looking very pleased with himself and doing these strange hand movements. Uh, and uh, Masseron closes his eyes and just chucks it away, right? Chucks it up and, uh, you know, uh, hopes, prays to call of all, I guess. All right, what do you do? Uh, so I'm going to momentarily think about my friend Kalis and, and wish that she was here to participate in this. But I'm inspired by her willingness to always just take that extra level of effort to get things done and not always the most above the board sort of way. And so I'm going to focus my onslaught or hedge magic, whichever I think would be best to steer uh, this ball into that closest hoop. Okay. It is going to be, uh, you know, at least you're getting it. You're going to be able to get it away from the teammate, probably no matter what, uh, even with a low roll, but to get it into another hoop is going to be quite a task. So, uh, but hedge magic will let you try to do it. So okay. uh, I'm going to apply a level of effort. Cool. And I roll a 13 with one level of effort. Okay. A 13 with one level of effort. Uh, ah, so that doesn't quite do it unless you have any skills that come into to mind here. Uh, just the Numenera, so just the smarts, not quite doing it this time. All right, uh, it is a it is a piece of Numenera that you're manipulating. If there's, I wonder if you can apply, if you if you if there's something you realize about the electricity that's within it that you're tinkering with with your hedge magic. You're on the edge. Uh, you're muted. Sorry, muted. <laughs> John, I think muted. that means he does not to figure Sorry. it out. <laughs> I am specialized in understanding Numenera, so in cool. any sort of edge that gives me, I will happily. Okay, I think uh, you tell me what you discover about the the Gazrava ball, but especially since you know what these are, I feel like they come into play. All right, so it it you know you you hedge magic it away, and it almost looks like it's not going to work. But what do you do to? Well, obviously, there are sensors in there and some sort of, you know, anti-gravity. There's a propulsion device in there that was not <laughs> activated. So me oh. fooling with the hedge magic must have triggered that. And it's little anti-gravity thing has just launched it directly at the goal. Perfect. Um, and as it is sailing through uh, and the crowd is going wild as it, you know, un- untouched seems to be perfectly sailing towards uh, uh, one of the hoops. Uh, the, the crowd is going wild and then suddenly uh, um, it it. Uh, the whole, all of the sound in this area goes totally off. Um, And you start feeling yourselves uh, uh, falling with a bit (gasps) faster. Uh, Any of you who are in the air uh, are falling to the ground uh, as though it were kind of normal gravity. Um, And the ball uh, teeters on the edge of the hoop uh, as as it is starting to be pulled down by regular gravity too. Um, But it it, it tinks through and there's a little sound of a bell as you win. and you're you're all very excited, uh, but um, the you hear nothing from uh, Messeron, and you see that everyone uh, of of Team Slaughter is standing stock still, and the entire audience is in fact standing oh, no. stock still, uh, frozen in in uh, in exclamations of joy or or sadness. Uh, there's there's a milieu where someone's picking someone else's pocket and is frozen in the act. 
um, and all has gone quiet uh, as this is a group GM intrusion. So, uh, and it is in fact a, a GM intrusion that is extending even all the way over to Kalis. So everybody gets oh, one wow. XP. Um, Sometimes the XP is, is not worth the scary. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Okay. Oh, what's happening? Are we falling? We're falling. Uh, so whoever was up in the air. And so Alara, I think you were. Yeah, sure. I was up in the air too because I pretended to go for a hoop and then threw it to the left. Excellent. Uh, so the, so. the two of you need to make me uh, probably, probably speed defense rolls as you kind of try to uh, roll in a way, like react and, and get your body into a position where it won't hurt so bad or grab onto a pole. Um, uh, it's going to oh, be... I roll a tw- you tell me. Oh, I roll a 12. And uh, remember, I have the speed dilation module on, so I'm I'm already kind of out of phase with time. Cool. So I have two steps in my favor. Beautiful. I'm um, trained in defense, speed defense and at physical performing arts, but I rolled a one again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> You're ahead of me. I'd just I just like know. to note what for the, the record. Ads? I, we cannot rename them a Germain, so nice. <laughs> fuck it up. <laughs> That's pretty it's uncool. Uh, all right, Grandpa Iron, you uh, beautifully and gracefully uh, descend or, or you know parkour off of a pole, uh, <laughs> or possibly the frozen other NPC. Off frozen NPCs, exactly. Love that. Nice. Thank you. I, I'm I'm feeling I'm watching this as I'm falling with like, oh yeah, that's awesome. oh no shit. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Um Alara, I think possibly uh what, what might happen is uh so you're you're falling and you're trying to grab onto something and you grab a hold of uh you try to grab a hold of um the one of the poles that you're nearby and try to get get to it and try to brace your fall or decrease the impact a little bit. Um and one of your long fingers gets <gasps> uh, you know, kind of like broken uh you can just feel no! it as you as you cling it, it it pulls your body pulls too hard no! on it and you're not that used to using these long fingers and so it uh it, it's going to do um uh like four points of damage to you as it as it really oh, those it just, eyes! Oh! yeah it's it, it is quite painful and distractingly so oh the dog just got nervous it's oh okay. i'm sorry it's <laughs> excellent and you all notice that the the sun has officially gone down there is no more sunlight uh, the sun is over the horizon, and uh, and all is quiet in Bodrov. And I think that is where we will uh, leave off for this session, uh, oh, yes. which was very fun. Go team! Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the your long fingers feel like I, I feel like a a broken finger should not be four points of damage, but something is something is different Something's about your horrible off. mutation. So. Uh, so nice way to bring those uh, mutations back into play. Right, it was mm-hmm. make them hurt. <laughs> All right, uh, and Kalis is separated from the group in this silent city of Bodrov as night takes over. Uh, so this was super fun. Yay. Uh, we will pick this back up in two weeks. So the next one will be uh, uh, next, you know, two Tuesdays from now, same time, same bat place. Um and uh, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for for watching, for helping us name our team, uh, for subscribing awesome. and letting me add cool, weird things and and uh, some assets which people will be able to use uh, later on. Which is very exciting. Um, the uh, so some other things that we would love uh, for you to come see. We've got a whole wild lineup of Twitch things coming up. Uh, I I loved my session where uh, some Twitch viewers helped us uh, help me collaboratively collaboratively build what what's happening in Bodrov, um, and I loved it a lot. And none of these people get to watch it, so that's especially fun. Secrets, and so I'm going to do another one of those on Tuesday, uh, and this coming Tuesday. So that'll be the 10th. So on our off week, I'm going to do a little planning session uh, at 5 p.m. Pacific. So, and I think I'm going to try to use the ruin building generator for something I have planned down the line. So very exciting from. Jade Colossus. Uh, this Friday, we have uh, The Raven Wants What You Have, which is our Invisible Sun uh, streamed narrative, which is super, uh, a really beautiful blast and uh, lots of emotions and uh, you know great, beautiful world building and really, really fun characters. And uh, the lot of us watch, um, we sort of watch the pre-recorded sessions and interact a lot in chat. So it's super fun to react along with you. So it's, it's worth coming and watching live, I think. So come check that out. That'll be Friday at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific. On Sunday, we have the Owl of Lycia, which is the first non-MCG run event We're gonna that's going to be on our channel. And that's by uh, Marcy Vellin, who's running a Cypher System powered, customed, uh, really cool setting and, and series of characters that you'll be hearing more about soon. So uh, there's a bit of a... Um, 
yeah, it's a really cool world and we're going to be telling you more about it soon. But that is going to be Sunday at uh, 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and then on, yeah. Uh, okay, so we got Friday, Raven Wants. Sunday, Owl of Lycia. This coming Tuesday is Darcy's uh, Ruin Generating Prep Session. And on Thursday, uh, which will be the 12th at 5 p.m. Pacific, we're, uh, Monty and I are going to have a conversation um, in a series we're hoping to do about running your best game ever, right? Like really good uh, GM discussion and tips, um, kind of, I think, relevant to new GMs too, but I think really trying to be, okay, so you're a GM, how do you make like a really, really good session? Um, and so the topic Monty's pitched is uh, about kind of not randomizing fun. And so Monty, is there anything you want to say about that or... Um, yeah, I mean, the, the title kind of kind of gives it, I think, a good hint of what we're going to talk about, but it it is uh, uh, oftentimes, uh, I, uh, I think, I think a mistake that GMs make is they, they rely too heavily on what the dice suggest should happen or too heavily on what roles should happen and not enough on focus and, and making sure that the game is fun. Um, mm. We'll go into that more in more detail, but uh, it's, it's, um, you know, sometimes randomness is really, really fun and sometimes it ruins the fun and you have to kind of know how to manage both. Cool. Uh, I'm really excited for that. So that'll be uh, Thursday, uh, April 12th at 5 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. And so if you like what we're doing, uh, we would love it if you followed or now that we're a Twitch uh, affiliate, you can subscribe and tell us you like what we're doing and uh, want us to make more stuff. And yeah, please follow us on. Uh, I see that all of our ways to follow us are listed below there. So we're doing lots of wild things, lots of uh, things in the works. So please continue staying tuned. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks, right. everybody. Team uh, Fistful of Shins will be back again in two weeks. <laughs>